Welcome back to Logan Random Aquascaping. My name is Logan, and today we're gonna talk all about aquarium diatoms, what they are, how they get into your tank, and most importantly, how to deal with them in a calm, efficient way. So before we dive into the topic, please go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. Helps me get this type of educational content out to a wider audience. And without further ado, let's dive into the topic. Okay, so what exactly are diatoms? Well, diatoms are sort of omnipresent. They exist in the air, air, in the water, in the oceans. They're actually responsible for absorbing a lot of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And they're commonly classified as a brown algae, but that's not entirely accurate. All you really need to know is that diatoms are a type of microalgae that exists in a class of algae that encompasses dozens and dozens of different algaes. And they usually appear in the glass and on the substrate, in the equipment, in your plants around the two week mark. And it's really an indication of the tank cycling and going through its natural processes. Eventually you get past those first couple weeks and green algae introduces itself in the aquarium, which is a totally different battle and usually outcompetes the diatoms. But occasionally the diatoms overstay their welcome. And that's what I'm kind of dealing with right now in my little nano aquarium. This is my UNS3N. It's a Iwagumi that I set up oh, about a month, month and a half ago. And I'm noticing that the diatoms are overstaying their welcome. So I'm gonna walk you through my process for getting rid of them. And if you take a holistic approach and follow these maintenance techniques, your diatoms, I assure you, will eventually go away. However, your mileage will vary in terms of the time frame that that takes. Sometimes I can get rid of diatoms in one to two maintenance sessions. Otherwise, despite my best efforts, they stick around for weeks to months. So just be persistent, be consistent, and stay on top of your maintenance. But let's dive into the specifics of what I actually do. Let's start off by cleaning the glass. Anytime I do a maintenance session, I like to do a light cleaning of the glass where I remove the calcium stains and any sort of low hanging fruit in terms of algae. And you'll notice that with these diatoms, they can be a bit stubborn and hard to remove with your typical soft bristle toothbrush. So once I'm done using my toothbrush, I'm gonna bring out the heavy guns, which in this case is my razor scraper. If you don't already have a razor scraper in your maintenance arsenal, I highly recommend that should be your next purchase. Head on over to boostplant.com to pick one up for yourself. This tool is excellent for removing stubborn algae and diatoms off the glass. So I'm just going through very methodically. And you wanna be careful not to hit the silicone in the corners of the tank because that's delicate. You really only wanna use a toothbrush there. Now, once I've completed that process, I like to drain the tank down a little bit because we're gonna be sloshing the water around as we do some more vigorous scrubbing. And this is the part where I like to really methodically go over all the hardscape with my electric toothbrush. An electric toothbrush is great because it gives you a little bit of extra elbow grease and is great for working those little nooks and crannies with the vibrations. So I'm just going through all over the place and I dip my toothbrush in a jar of hydrogen peroxide to also give me an extra edge and provide a little chemical help. So once I'm done with that process, the water is going to be looking super cloudy. I'm also going to give my plants a little bit of a brush. This is a great technique for your slower growers with nice smooth leaves like Anubias. In this tank, I only have carbon carpeting plants, it's all Macranthema Monte Carlo. So I'm really just gonna kind of tease it away, you know, very gently brush because we don't wanna uproot the plants. But this is also a good opportunity to kind of tease away any rotting organic tissue because that's only going to contribute to further diatoms and further algae if that's something you're dealing with. So once that process is done, it is time to do the big water change and water changes are key. When in doubt, dilution is the solution. So I'm doing about an 80% water change in this little nano tank. It's the UNS3N, it's only three gallons, so there's no excuse not to. Now, before we add the water back in, I'm gonna show you one last technique that is really great for hardscape in the glass. I like to use a spray bottle of hydrogen peroxide to just spray down the exposed stones as well as the exposed glass. And this is something you can even do if you have livestock in the tank. I do it in my Caradina tanks. Obviously, you wanna avoid direct contact with any fauna, and some plants like mosses are gonna be very sensitive to it, so do your own research. And then once that process is done, we're gonna fill the tank back up with the water. I'm using my tap water, which is super soft. And when that process is complete, we're gonna take a step back and examine the results. And you can see that the spot treatment has made a very massive difference. Sometimes when you're scrubbing this stuff away, it feels like you're not making progress. But if you take before and after pictures, you'll see a really, really big difference. In a couple days, these diatoms may come back, but that's just something you have to be willing to accept. But your persistence 
persistence, I promise you, will pay off as long as you find that balance between nutrient content, between lighting, and between CO2. If one of those things is totally out of whack or completely missing from the equation, you might find yourself fighting an endless battle, but in my case, I know the CO2 is good, I know the nutrient levels I'm dosing are good, and I know the lighting is tried and true, so it's just a matter of doing that maintenance and keeping up with it. And before you know it, your diatoms will be out of your life. So let me know down below in the comments if you have any questions about diatoms or how to get rid of them. Happy to answer your questions. And as always, thank you for watching these videos. I always look forward to putting out more and more content. So your comments and shares of the video mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching. This has been Logan and I will catch you guys and gals next time. Thank you.